Welcome to the African SME Podcast. I am Abna Mensa. The African SME seeks to inspire, impact, and innovate the next generation of small and medium enterprises from Africa and the world. This presentation is on Changing the African Story, delivered by Cecil Sunkwa Mills, Director, Multi Choice Ghana, and Managing Director. Go TV Ghana Limited. Take a listen. Changing the African story. The presentation I would go through talks about um, the industry that I work with, and it does talk focus more on business opportunities. Um, we are aware of challenges which will always be there. Uh, they could be lessened by government intervention, but however, there are a lot of success stories, and there are people who are doing business on a daily basis and we don't want to miss the ball. So we're looking at how are people doing it and what is changing in Africa and Ghana and how can we use those opportunities uh, to still have successful businesses. So what is the African story? Uh, basically, I'm going to, the presentation will be in uh, five parts um, about the African story, how we tell the story, why do we have to change the African story and how we change it and who tells the story. Um, like y'all said, we didn't want this to be a political business issue, but we are actually here uh, during speeches of a lot of leaders. They tell you, an African is about, the need to tell the African story. And they, when they speak to different groups, and in this case, you see I have a list in which means it's not just journalists or the media, but we tell our story through different ways. Now, what is the African story? It may mean nothing to somebody. What is the story? Is it just a cliche that people put in their speeches? But you see, most African journalists, they rarely think or talk about their vocation in terms of just, let's, I'm just telling the African story. It's usually based on what are the hot issues, current, present, and most of them you find are national issues and local issues. Uh, we experience that on radio, we experience that on TV. So a lot of the focus is within Africa. Now this is a key thing that we should note, and we'll see how that impacts on us later. And the focus is usually very different from their counterparts in the West, who look out outwards a lot more because I guess a lot more is fixed in, in, in home unless you have a few matters of stuff, which is news and politics. So I did a sweep on the web. I didn't want to show all the negatives, but if you just go to Google and you do that, these are some of the key African pictures that you see. Okay, of course, wildlife, uh, war, I'm looking for water, um, culture, dancing, African faces. The kids looking, asking for food is never missing with the African story. Uh, drumming and a few um, key African leaders and I chose to put Kwame Nkrumah there. This is generally, if you Google, you will see this trend. You try other continents and you'll see the big difference of what it is. So now who is telling this story? Is this what are we putting out there? But this is all, not all negative, and we can, you, in, in the presentation, you will see how we can thrive and use this based on the changes that are currently happen. How do we tell the story currently? Of course, our journalists, um, our artists or artists, okay, who are in dance, we tell our story through dance, poetry, music, fashion, fabrics, theater concerts, our movies, okay, that's where documentaries, paintings, carvings, and sculptors, okay. Our heritage, our festivals, and also through our key opinion leaders when they have the opportunity. And remember Asamajan's fav uh, his famous dance, that sent the dance all over the world, okay. Those are ways we tell our stories. So through our sportsmen and women, in, uh, when you say Jamaica, you will think of Usain Bolt. 
there's a story to be told. How do we leverage through these channels to tell our story? This is a pictorial view of some of uh, the mediums that we use. Some of the media channels, and we know this, they've had a lot of um, several conflicts in different countries, and I look at it not just from a Ghanaian perspective. Um, in some places, Somalia, even in Kenya, in Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, there have been challenges. Okay? And Ghana, when it comes to free press, I think we have a much higher rating. But this is a challenge for some other African countries that we should be aware of, of some of the limitations and challenges of, the, of, the, of using the media. And that's why we use other channels. Nevertheless, let's talk positive. Times are changing. The mass and social media. I know Bernard loves the social media. Bernard Avle. <laughs> Times are changing. So they're becoming the purveyors of education and development and sending information across. Okay. They're assuming roles that are more people-centered. They focus on what the customers want. Uh, we're just talking about the latest social media blitz where we had a price increase and it went around social media. Why are we increasing prices? So we had to go further to explain not just to our customers, to even non-customers. This is how powerful it is. And they also articulate the view of the public to government and businesses. Okay. So this is another strong way that we share our story and our culture. So it can be used in other ways. The thing is, these new media, they don't have limitations. It allows us to break the boundaries. So you don't need to take your newspaper and, or create a magazine to sell in Germany or in Canada. You can still send information through. So the, I'm looking at the transport means now. Why do we need to change the story? There's a new wind blowing in Africa. And I think Edward in his presentation mentioned some of the basic characteristics that I would talk about. But it's the Africa youth. They're no longer willing to accept just the influences and tastes. It's a new generation. They don't see barriers. They don't see color. For, to them, everything seems possible. They can reach out. Now, this is the major thing. And you will see, as I go on, you look at the numbers that are involved. So instead of driving, instead they are driven by rising prosperity and cultural confidence. They're actually confident of being African and the traditional things about Africa. They're reinvesting in and reinventing our culture in a very different way. I've got some videos you would see and traditions. And they're making consumption choices to match these reinvestments that they are making. I'm going to play this video. Dark continent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So dark. We agree. They say we're always shooting each other. Of course. They say kids are hungry here.
So yes, this is Africa, but not as they see it, rather as we know it. So that is a deep expression of where Africa is going. Um, you saw the scenes, the clothing, it's a complete blend, and they're vibrant, they're doing movies, they're, do, they're doing it right in the setting without, as it is, and it sells. We remember Africa Magic starting some time ago, and now people say oh, other stations have Africa Magic. Why do they call it Africa Magic? Because it's selling, and it's one of the channels that we have most people viewing. That is, is a line of business, and it's all African. It is not imported. It's just a creative ability we have innate here. So these are some, it's a very um, well done video to give us an idea of how we can sell Africa and an idea into where Africa is going. It's not just that, we look at our fashion, the way the dressing is going now. In fact, I was wondering when I was coming if I should wear this or I should wear something African. Dr. Nimoy Thompson had an African shirt. The way we dress now. Now when they say formal, formal can mean you can go African. Things are changing. Okay. Now this means that there's a huge window of opportunity in Africa for the fashion industry. The direction is changing and it's for Africa and also outside. Also, what we eat has moved from our kitchens to the whole world. We've heard songs about jollof rice. What does it do to jollof rice? It's top of the menu with Kele Willy for people visiting Africa. And you will see, I have a quick video of some lady who's opened um, a place outside in the UK. There it is. It's called Chop Pot. Now, whoever thought that Ayn Katinkwain could go this far? Let's take a Look at the packaging she's using. The just put it really close to the camera. And then when we go out, I'll just bring my stew with me. Yeah. <laughs> 545, please. Please tell me you have 500 or change. I can't I see a telephone there. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Chop pot is a commercialised Ghanaian food. So this is the first retail outlet here at the O2 Future Road Centre. Um, we also have a chilled range here, which is available in Selfridges Food for London. Uh, but we also have park budgets and a few universities. Um, so that's basically the premise, is to commercialise our food. So we do traditional and modern Ghanaian cuisine based on the Akan ethnic group uh, traditional meals. Once has been tremendous. Over at Selfridges, we set out regularly of the Akata Pine, which we sell as a very package meal. Um, we've been here at the O2 Centre Future Road for about six, seven weeks now, and the response has been great. Uh, we have all different uh, types of customers, um, from the office worker to someone looking for um, a healthy and nutrition meal who's just been to the gym. Um, we have children, wine, students, uh, whatever groups, Japanese, Indians. Ghanaians, Nigerians, English. So I think it was supposed to be excellent. I'm really excited to be here. How is it? And I'm apparently I'm honorary critic. <laughs> <laughs> so Ifia is um, set up something great in the UK. Uh, she's actually doing a deal with Selfridges currently. She's selling frozen food to universities. She's got all kinds of clientele who are buying food. And what is she? The top is uh, in Katin Kwai, it sells. And she's now doing frozen packs for people so you can naturally microwave your food. Okay. So it's African stuff, which has gone from local to international. And we saw the packaging. Okay. 
right? Now, it's also in what we drink for the people in that industry. We see people buy Guinness from here. And they even some time back, they try to take it outside Ghana because this particular Guinness you have made here is different from all the Guinness outside, okay? But it's been brewed specially. Now, they've come up with this other one, Origin. Now, what is unique about these drinks? It's got African in it. Malta Guinness, typically African, okay? Alomo Betis, Kasaprekou, gone into Nigeria, heading to South Africa and East Africa currently. Bottled water. Sorry, I should have been showing this one, your sponsors. But it's, it's all Ghanaian. Now, you look at the branding, anything, it look, it's completely got an international look. So it's going from local to international. The fact that we're doing it here doesn't mean we should lower the standards. It should be the same international standard and that should always be the focus. Okay, this is origin. The key thing about this is it's such a great innovation that we've taken the local herbs and fruit of Africa and we've put it into an amazing bottle and it, it would go, it would knock down what I'm not, I'm not knocking down anybody's products, but it will compare with a Breeza or any of those products. It belongs to the same group. And watch what do you address. get when you mix the flavors of African herbs and fruits with alcohol? Bittersweet blend with flavors of African herbs and fruit. Origin, original inside. So if you saw that advert, you saw cola nut, you saw spices. It's completely African, but looks international. The guy's got cowries on his head. Look at the dressing. Somebody's in a hoodie, which is Westing, but everything else. So it's a complete blend, and the young people. This is what is happening now. It's called... African consumption. In our movies, there's no way I could do without this one. Okay, and this is one of the key areas that we keep pushing, not only in movies, also in sports. And uh, you know, we currently cover a lot of the leagues uh, in Africa. It's at huge cost. Return is not coming yet, but it's something that we must do to keep it going. Otherwise, we do not expose our story. Okay. A lot of the familiar faces that have sprung up from both uh, Ghana and that. It's gone even to the point where we've started our own movie awards. Now, these are not just best movies, but they go to reward people, even the people who do lights, who do sound, producers, directors. It awards them. Uh, this, this year, I think, would be the, is it the fourth or fifth? The fourth award. Your vote this is just can make the difference on the 2015 Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards. Nominees for Best Actress in a Comedy. Choke Silva, Folly. Sorry, am I spoiling the party? Jack, get me out of here! Weruchi Opia, When Love Happens. Do you mind? I'm not in the mood. Rita Dominic, The Meeting. Best Wonder! Yeah! Uh, got a comma! Uh -huh. Lydia Forson, A Letter from Adam. Oh, me, 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 money, mo. Oh, girl, you make my head sick. You say, it may it him. I come from Lagos. Don't talk like that. You want to remove, uh, remove the work? Don't do like that now. Voting closes on the 28th of February at midnight.
vote for your favorite nominee via our website, mobile site, or WeChat. Visit africamagic.tv for more info. The 2015 AMVCAs are sponsored by Amsel Malta. Low sugar. Be the best you can be. So as that run, you can see the emotion on people's faces. They smile at specific actors that they know. This is an African product meant for Africa and it sells. So this is another key way that we actually tell our story with movies. Okay. Music and dance has gone far. Um, there are lots of shows that are also held in Ghana. We found a lot of stars. I know we, um, the Nigerians are a lot more uh, seem a lot more exposed than we are. And there are ways that they're doing it. It's the creation of platforms and making sure that the platforms are put at the right places. Those are this content, then there's their channels, and that the channels must sit on platforms, whether it's satellite or terrestrial. And that is how we tell our story. There is one channel that I'm just going to do a quick one on which is 100% Ghanaian. It's growing, it's grown, but it's been, in terms of exposure, it's on its way, and it's on its way very quickly. Fiesta. He's, he's, this is a channel to watch, and this channel's aim is strongly Ghanaian. International Fisherman. That's to the beat. She figure say you fool, I take it three points. Make it three points. Three points. Yeah, three points. She figure say you fool, I take it three points. Make it three points. Okay, I see you nodding your head. But this is how we tell our story. Okay. Um, some of these things may not directly, of course, if we got assistance from government, to make it, we'll make it easier. Policies can make it easier. But it does not stop us from creating. It doesn't stop us. Um, there's still a lot of opportunity, and we just got to keep going to it. So how do we change uh, the African story, I've showed that. This is where Africa sits. A billion people is, look, it's the market everybody is now trying to get into. Some people call it the next frontier. They want, we have resources, we have people, we have rich culture. There's serious opportunity for growth, both internet, mobile telephony. And we have a market, a huge market. And the key thing, 50% of our population is under 20 years. That is the big market we should be focusing on. It's a young population. And this young population, like I mentioned, have their characteristics that they would keep. Now, this is a new word that has been coined. It's called, we change through our consumption. We must consume what we produce. And this is where it is moving. Why are we dressing African now? Some time ago, if you went to a restaurant, it would be difficult to order wache or jollof. You want to order continental, true? Why are we not shy anymore? Because now we, we have the pride to consume what is African. And the market trend is African. And now this is the way that has been gone, is African consumption. Okay. And you find that it's increasing because now there's also a lot more travel across Africa and business across Africa. We're eating, when you travel, you want to eat more of the local food of, say, Kenya or Togo. You want to eat acheke, not pizza. 
is African consumption. Okay, so this is a trend and it's connected right through us. This is a, is, is a key sheet that it gives a bit of detail. I'll just talk about the one on the right. The forces that are driving this trend, okay. Legislative changes allowing more travel and making commerce between African uh, nations easier. It's much more easier to do business and you find that now you've got banks that are running across countries. So it's easier now to do business across countries. Our African growth rates remain strong. The youth are reinventing the continent's culture and traditions, combining fashion in an amazing way. It's okay for men to wear beads today, and it's fine. Our brands understand African consumers better than anyone. So let's not underestimate our capacity. As they become more digitally interconnected, we've seen the number of mobile phones that are around, and those on Twitter and WhatsApp. So we're digitally interconnected. We're more clued up more than ever. International television reaches out to different homes, if you can get it. Increasing disposable incomes. Incomes will definitely increase. We go through tough times like we're going now, but it will end, it will come up, and things will get better. We'll make more money, okay? And the money people's pocket sizes will grow. So let's not wait for it to grow. Let's start now. Uh, from Lagos to Limpopo, the pendulum of activism is in full swing. It's a revolution that is happening. People are talking more, using Twitter, pushing. They're chasing the badge around town. They want to see the badge in. Today's new offerings and solutions are flooding the market. Okay. Localized demands need localized solutions. We must stop importing solutions. We have the solutions that we can do here. Okay. And no brands understand our market, our consumers better than us. Okay. I've talked about our cultural stories and our festivals. Okay. What and how we can use that to visibly embed our products and services. We should look at that and look at how we can infuse it. What stories can we use to do this? These are key points that I think you can just take a few notes on about Africa, African consumption. Plot your route wisely. You should know your target consumer deeply. It's an African market we're looking at. So this goes for any product that you, you're working on. Tailor make solutions. Respect the continents or your countries, plethora of cultures, and go the extra mile to tailor for the selected market. Okay, in this case, it should be Ghana, though I made the presentation African. Limited editions by limiting location. Take localization to the extreme by offering tailored products, services, and experiences to a limited area. Tribe and demographic is part of your targeting. Okay. That's why we have Africa Magic Ausa, Africa Magic Igbo. And what we started in Ghana, we've started something. It's a four-hour block, which will launch on the 1st of November for Ghanaian movies. We've had a session with the creative industry. So we're looking for Ghanaian content. We start on a four-hour block. If the content is a lot, what happens next? It becomes a 12-hour block. If, there, if there's still a lot more good content, it becomes a 24-hour block. And what does that mean? Probably you have Africa magic. I don't know what it will be called. Aquaba or something. But this is how it's done. It's a platform that is being provided where we can sell uh, um, our music, our culture, our music, our products and services because they're advertising opportunities that will run on those platforms. It's just one of the many ways. Limitless location is the other one. Campaigns to intracontinental services. Don't forget the diaspora. Okay. I see some handbags in Medina. Saw the same thing in the U.S. selling at a whopping price but connectivity, okay? So there is a market. A few examples, 
We've heard about Jumia. There's also, I think there's also another name, the online. Okay, Jumia is in Uganda, it's in Nigeria, it's here. It's a pure African brand. Steers from South Africa, now sitting in Morocco. But they all started on, these are big brands, but they all started. Juvago is a hotel booking site. African, it does a lot in Eastern, Eastern, Southern Africa and Ethiopia area, and it's doing very well. It's one of the most relied on booking. Created by an African online, okay? And the SAB Miller may be big, but they focus, you find, you find Hero somewhere, you find a different brand of beer here, but they're doing the beers and naming them to suit the different localities, for example. Who tells the changing African story? We look at traditional and then the evolving new storytellers in our media. They're responsible for telling our story. So, change is here. With a new frontier, it's not outside Africa, it is here. And nobody is gonna tell our story for us. We have media, we have TV stations, we have radio, it is here. We have journalists, we have musicians. We will tell our own story. We do not need somebody to tell our story for us. If we don't start telling it, they will tell our stories for us. However, we know that there are some uh, partners who have taken specific interest in telling the story of Africa. Um, a company tries that. It's an African company born in South Africa. The CNN uh, and a couple of others uh, went Cobb now the more of uh, blessed memory was in BBC, he pushed the African agenda and tried to push the African story. Now those are platforms, but when the businesses have products and services, that is what we can use to make the story complete. This is another clip. Can we get some volume? Our great continent is rich with stories. Stories of who we are and of where we are from. Stories of passion and inspiration. Stories that comfort us, enrich us, and reveal who we are. Because we are our stories. Proudly celebrating and showcasing the best in African talent and programming. Multi-choice. We are Africa. I mentioned this, we've heard of African Voices, Focus on Africa. Those are some strong programs that other media have partnered and are pushing the agenda of Africa. This is the last one I think I would show, and then I'll round up. But it tells a brilliant story. Things will not always be like this, uh, with power and all that. Things will change, but we've got to prepare now and for going forward. Thank you. On the move, changing perceptions, pushing limits. Today's Africa is not framed by the past. A new generation is stepping up, embracing tradition while blazing a new path, giving voice to unique style, connected in ways others before were not. This is where the urban pulse meets creativity and a new culture thrives. This is African Voices. Veering off the traditional trails and down new culinary paths, the foodies of Africa is serving up excitement. I'm Katira King. Let's start with one man shaking things up here in Ghana. It really was an experiment and it was actually a very dairy one because it hadn't been done before. If you think outside the box, I'm sure there's a lot of opportunity that can be yielded at the end of the day. Thank you for listening to the African SME podcast. For more of such inspiring, impactful and innovative discussions, subscribe to the African SME podcast or visit our website 
www.africansme.org for more information and our upcoming conferences. Goodbye.